you know, I have science degrees, I have a couple law degrees, and I'm just a garbage man at heart. When I see this stuff, I see, God, I'm leaving this for my children. I'm leaving this for my grandchildren. It's just, how can we be doing this? It's just disgusting. From a cruise ship two miles offshore, Alaska's shoreline looks pristine, but it's not. It's a hell of a mess up here, and people need to realize that. Want to go down and look at debris? Great. All right, let's go down and do that. Go AK stands for Gulf of Alaska Keeper. The mission of Gulf of Alaska Keeper is to protect water quality and habitat and the life that depends on it in the Gulf of Alaska. 95% of what we do is involve marine debris. The rivers are a major problem because that feeds into all the oceans, of course. We move a lot of garbage. We only brought 11 of these super sacks back with us. It's all we could fit in the landing craft we had out there. But there are 71 more of these on the beach out there. Cash for later pickup. Buoys, floats, and things like that. This is our 20th year doing it. The people involved in this cleanup have been at it since 2002. And we got a major grant this summer to go work at Gore Point. And we're going to get out there from Whittier, Alaska, where we keep our boats. All right, I've been extremely fortunate to work with my family over the years. My brother Josh has come up and run our field crews. My boys started working on these projects when they were young, same time I started working on them, and they've worked with us all through the years. My wife has been working the research on this stuff with us for years, so it's been absolutely fantastic. It was a challenge to get everything ready and prepped. And you just don't drive to the beach with some pickups and, you know, everybody in their flip-flops and shorts and bikini tops and pick up garbage. We've established a uh, marine debris monitoring program. And we have 14 beaches in Prince William Sound that are designated beaches that we clean every year. And we have three out at the Gore Point region. But the idea is to get a geographic spread of beaches that we can collect data on that would reflect the coastwide annual distribution of debris. We're gonna identify every single piece of plastic that we find there. We're gonna weigh everything and we're gonna count things and we have about 120 categories of items. So all of that will be monitored and written down. And then we can compare that to what we've seen in previous years. We have a tremendous amount of data. We provide that data to the resource agencies, both state and federal resource agencies, uh, Park Service, or the Forest Service is using it now and shared it with Congress. What Chris Pallister and his team are accomplishing has been, to me, nothing short of amazing. Their scientific approach and their data collection, when they put a presentation together to government officials or to corporations, they are presenting solid, hard data This is Gore Point, this is it. One of the prettiest places in the world. It's one of the dirtiest beaches. So we love this place. It's beautiful, it's remote. It's really satisfying for all of us to be back here. This is a, a really key catchment basin on the North Pacific and the currents are all running this way so they all get caught in here. There's a lot of garbage, a lot more than a typical year. It's from the tide line all the way up into the woods here. And this little short stretch we've done already, we've probably picked up six, 700 pounds. I expect by the time we're done with this beach, we'll get 8,000 pounds, somewhere near eight to 10,000 pounds. I mean, this is a wilderness area. It shouldn't have any garbage in it. And it's loaded with garbage. It's just frightening actually to see how much trash is on this beach.
The waste management thing really became a big issue for us as we started bringing in these huge volumes of stuff and the cost of it all. We're not there yet, and we need big companies, big money to tackle this issue. That'll be a huge step in the right direction. It'd be just fantastic if they can figure that out. I'm a garbage geek. This is what we call trash talk. The difficulty with marine debris cleanup in Alaska is 33,000 miles of coastline. We have about the same amount of coastline as the rest of the United States combined. Half of Alaska, you cannot reach by road. You've got to take a plane, you've got to take a boat, you've got to take a combination of different things. There are times you might end up on a dog sled. You never know. We just picked up the volunteer crew, a bunch of high school kids. Any kid that wants to come out here has got to have a little bit of spunk. So you got to give them credit. We'll get them on a beach, they'll move a lot of garbage for us. Uh, we usually come in and bring high school students, teachers, people to like get the experience that they can take like back to their classes or back to the community to be like, nah, nah guys, look, look at what's going on out there. I mean, honestly, when we got here, it didn't look like there was a lot, but like when we started like going through stuff, it's like there's a lot. I love it right now. It's so much fun. Well, it's a lot of physical labor, but it feels easier because the cause is good motivation. Being a, a Nupiak woman from Alaska, it feels really empowering to clean up my lands. It's styrofoam, water bottles, and fishing gear. We pick up thousands of buoys of all kinds of shapes and sizes. A lot of these drums and buckets and crates and totes and you name it, baskets, and a huge amount of lines and nets. For sure this is out of container spill because they're brand new. We're finding them all over the place. There are several other items that are from that container too. It seems to me like the container spills are getting worse and not better. I found a lot of like moisturizer containers today and like shampoo, hand wash, that kind of thing. These are brand new. Found these on two sites in Prince William Sound and they're all over this beach. Lots of hard hat. You know, some of them may be Chinese, some of them may be American. I don't know where they're coming from. There is some local stuff, but predominantly it's from out east or west, I should say. We found a lot of trash from Japan and Russia and China. Every time there's a natural disaster in the Pacific, whether it's a typhoon in the Philippines or Japan or a tsunami, we get to trash here. It comes across really quickly. The ocean currents bring a lot of marine debris over from the rest of the world as well. So we're not just cleaning up the bit that is generated here, we're also cleaning up stuff that's generated all across the world where they may not have as strict environmental regulations as we do. So it's being disposed there and ending up on our beaches. It is a major water quality and habitat problem. There are pretty strong evidence that those marine debris components, whether it is chemicals that are part of them or if it's the microplastics that are present, have significant effects on the health of fish. It's not just in the fish or in the birds, it's in everyone. So it's, it's a huge problem. We're about ready to call it. Our last sack is about stuffed full, so. Josh said he has water running down his butt crack, so we have to go. Yeah, I'm all <laughs> over that. 10 hours of that. I bet you that doesn't make the film. <laughs> These projects cost a lot. I mean, a whole lot of money, because they're remote, there's a massive amount of garbage. A helicopter to a barge and flying us out in the big boat. Once stuff gets out here, it's, it's very, very difficult and very expensive to remove as well. 
departed from Gore Point a couple hours ago. Uh, we should be in Homer in about an hour and 20 minutes. I'm hauling a fraction of the marine debris that we picked up at Gore Point. Roughly about 4,000 pounds, we're hoping to kind of go through it and see what's recyclable. That's been one of our biggest challenges. What do we do with the debris once we get it collected? A lot of years it's just gone into town and gone into the landfills, which is just horrible. Somebody's got to do something about it. And I think nationally, internationally now, there's starting to be big momentum to do something about this problem. I think we're getting somewhere finally. I am responsible for overseeing projects for the Alliance to End Plastic Waste in the Americas region. The Alliance to End Plastic Waste is a global nonprofit organization with a mission to end plastic waste in the environment and to create a circular economy for plastics. Gulf of Alaska Keeper was intending to clean up a shoreline and didn't have a solution of where to send the plastic waste. And I said, I know where to send it. I'll send it to CRDC because they can take just about anything. Beach plastic is really very difficult to deal with. Beach plastic can be sunburned. It can have crustaceans on it. It can have a little bit of sand and maybe even some seaweed. That makes that plastic typically non-recyclable. Yet it is the very plastic that we should be recycling because it's this stuff, that tragic plastic that got itself into our environment. We need to bite into this problem and we need to do it in volume and we need to do it now. Plastics are also an issue just because there's so much of them. They don't degrade in landfills. For smaller landfills, when you've got large quantities of things like that, you're taking up a lot of airspace. The landfill in Anchorage started requiring that the nets be cut up before they would accept them. That made it more difficult than ever to find a place to dispose of all the debris that they collected. Waste management and plastics is really a worldwide issue. The biggest thing in plastics that the world needs is more ability to recycle. We knew that shipping material from Alaska to York, Pennsylvania would be cost prohibitive. And so FedEx stepped up and volunteered to ship the material for us so that we could process the material here at the CRDC facility. Look at the size of this thing. Shredder's gonna have a uh, nice meal with this one. CRDC stands for the Center of Regenerative Design and Collaboration. Our whole purpose is to really address this plastic issue that the world is confronted with. We think through our product, Resin 8, we can actually make a large impact. And Resin 8 is named because there's actually thousands of different mixes of plastic but seven resin types, and we consider this the eighth resin, and the product has actually resonated with, with people as well. The debris that we got from the beaches in Alaska, today it's gonna to be granulated. It's going to be then mixed with the mineral additives that we utilize. It'll be heat extruded, and then ground into the exact gradation and size and structure that we'd normally look for in construction sand. So obviously the ideal situation is not to be shipping plastic from Alaska to York, Pennsylvania. The carbon footprint associated with that is untenable. Really, this is a proof of concept. We're demonstrating we can use this plastic, we can absorb this plastic, we can convert it into resonate, and it can go into concrete products here. The concept is to put smaller size plants in regional areas. I often call it the Starbucks business model. And as much as where there's consumers, plastic and concrete, we can have one of these facilities. Actually, we're already in conversations, put in a, a, a plant that's scaled specifically for the needs of a startup facility in Alaska. And we're really looking forward to that. Resonate is absolutely a game changer. Unfortunately, about 90% of plastic waste worldwide is not being recycled. We can accept all of that plastic waste and actually convert it into an environmentally benign material that adds value to concrete. We're not just hiding plastic in concrete, we're actually improving the performance of that concrete. Reduction of weight, added insulation, maintenance of strength, maintenance of fire resistance, 
I mean, the possibilities are endless here. It's important for the Alliance to support this project because we act as a connector, connecting solutions with communities. It's an opportunity for us to scale and replicate. I think the ultimate goal is for every community to have a solution for all of their plastic waste. As a part of the Alliance, my job is to help our project partners be successful. And sitting here in this facility in York, Pennsylvania, it's seeing that dream, that hope come to life. This has been in my heart and soul, my stomach, my gut, since I don't know how far back, you know. It's a thoughtful care of the environment that my father instilled in me a long time ago. It's just, I want places to be natural. Everybody in the world should go out for a week to clean up trash and see what it's really like. Inspire more people to be more aware of like the amount of trash like they're putting out hopefully inspire them to go clean a beach too. The future looks good in Alaska if we just tend to business and take care of the resources that we have and, and take care of the people. I don't want to live anywhere else. I like this place. I hate to see it get trashed. <laughs> I have grandchildren. Um, I'd really like to leave this place a lot cleaner. Um, I was born at about the same age that we started to use plastic commercially. And I remember a world that was completely different than this world today. So I would like to think that within 10 years, like hard work and alliances, like this alliance that we have with the Alliance 10 Plastic Waste, we're actually gonna get this solved. I remember worrying about the ozone. We got that solved so we can get this solved too.